Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And you'll remember that last week I talked about there being a, um, a bit of a problem with um, making the electronics component in order to make in order to keep the uh, red circuit production going at the rate we needed it to go at. And that was partially solved by me producing a, 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 a build that produced lithium in enormous quantities. But now Mark has significantly expanded on that by uh, essentially out of one fell swoop completely solving the uh, electronic component production problems because we've now gone from having a, about a little trickle of them coming out from the old system that was producing them to this new system you can see here where we've got the four components coming in like this um, being wiggled, wiggled up on these belts here and producing four blue belts worth of electronic components in a steady steady stream and those are running down straight into a warehouse here um, it's not very full at the moment, although you can see there it's, it's ticking up quite quickly because I've just gone in and, and fixed a problem it was having. Um, but this should fairly soon get up to 160 stacks, then we can call a train, and things should work quite nicely. So this is, this is now going to solve all of our red circuit problems, or at least that's the theory. On a similar note, he's also put in a system over here which is capable of taking in coal, then liquefying it, turning that into petroleum gas, and then turning all of that, plus some of the coal that was originally brought in, into plastic. Now this system isn't really working, running at the moment, because the idea of this is that we're going to use it for when we have too much coal. Because we've had a bit of a problem recently with uh, with, with a lot of the resources backing up in, from, the, from the core mining systems. So we've decided this would be a great way to get rid of excess coal, because at the moment we don't have excess oil, we're having to dig up quite a lot of it. So having so using up excess coal to turn it into plastic with, with no, with no uh, crude oil being used at all, seems like an excellent idea. That brings me on neatly to just over here, where all of the uh, the supplies are going are, are working from the, uh, from the from the core mining. So we, as you can see, we've got the core trains arriving and then clearing off reasonably quickly when there's another core drill to go off and and, uh, and collect the resources from. We've got a second one coming in here at the moment, and that can unload into the into all of these machines. And then, as ever, it then produces a nice healthy supply of all of the resources. Well, all of the mundane basic resources. And at the moment, if we look over here, we can see that. Well, once again, with the exception of the raw of the uh, rare metals, which actually were, the the uh, raw rare metals were being uh, were flowing before, but now that's stopped again. With the, the exception of that one, all of these warehouses are filling up. And if we have a look along here, we can see there is yeah, there's a little bit more than a train's worth of um, iron ore, so we're probably okay there. Um, we've got less than a train's worth of um, copper ore, but then it is filling a train right now. To be fair, this one's full as we saw. Stone, we have just over a train, even though we have a train in. Well, right now it's just under a train, so yeah, there's about a bit, it seems to be mostly keeping up the uh, the coal is mostly keep is struggling a bit actually there's only half a train's worth there which is interesting because we we had a um, we had a problem with that before but as you can see down here this is the prioritization I was talking about we've got this blue splitter here that's taking out the coal the priority up here to go into the into the storage system but when there's an excess of it when this backs up it will then be passed down here to go over here to be to be uh, dumped or turned turned into the plastic as I was saying and that ensures that we uh, we don't over, we never overflow on it but this is always a lower priority and that we'll save it for up here if, if we possibly can uranium well there's there is there is some uranium. Uranium is produced much more slowly so that's fine. But this all works quite nicely because we, we want to keep these being used as a higher priority and then use the other other supplies if we absolutely have to as a sort of as a, as a lower priority supply just because um, these ones are being produced at a steady steady rate whereas anything that comes out of a mine is going to be produced in a burst but from a limited pool as I've discussed, discussed before. We also have delivery cannons bringing in excess core chunks from other planets to here as well. And we have the trains coming up to drop off here, which are coming from Norvis. So I shall, continuing to work backwards along these streams, I shall talk about this briefly. So when we have resources coming down from Norbit, a train will pull up here, it'll dump them out onto all of these belts, it'll flow around here, up, up the system, and then go in, and then just be, I think it's get, most of it gets, yeah, passed along this one here, except for stone and copper, which are pulled out separately, apparently. Um, fine but then they'll get fed into the bottom of here and, and, and they'll just get passed around sorted in the sort of matron here and go into the relevant systems all the way along here so the idea is that this will now this is, this is now capable of feeding all of those resources through sorting them all out and using the using the resources that are generated as a sort of as an overflow from various things like core mining or from norbit as a priority so they get used up first the other thing the trains that come down from norbit can do is bring miscellaneous stuff so buildings that have been made up in Norbit, Norbit and are needed down on Norvis. So things like the pylon substations or the uh, the space rail and those can then be fed up they'll come through they'll come through here from the from the emptying system 
they'll be passed through the sword to here and they'll be rejected by all of these filters and that means they'll then drop into this purple chest here so bots will then come and take them away as soon as possible so most so far that I think this has basically been used for bringing down space rail to build up the system to send stuff up to Norbit but in theory it can be used for other things as well like the wide area beacons is another good example these trains come from all the way from from over here where they will come flying any train that comes out of the out of the space elevator will then go around this rather ugly loop here and go in, into an unload station here the reason we put this loop in instead of the straight rails that were coming across here that we had before was it turned out that the trains were struggling to break rapidly enough as they came out of the out of the space elevator so they were only, only most they seem to only be able to go into the station so if there's a train stopped in this station the next one will get jammed behind it and we, we and we ended up with having a lot of problems so this loop round here is designed to sort of to spread the trains out a bit and, and, and allow them to go to all three of these stations, all four of these stations and hopefully unload and then I think there's this one here as an emergency bypass uh, no, this is here as a bypass for any of the fluid trains that don't stop off at these stations so here here we go. See, there's a there's a train. It's it doesn't actually have any junk in it, but it'll come into the station anyway, to um to check, and then and then once it's done that, it can then head off to wherever it's needed. All the resources that are unloaded here then flow down all of these belts and get put into these trains down here. So we've got we've got a couple of trains sat here waiting in this in this in this uh, sorting area, and so when when there's enough for a train to be completely full, it will or a train to be sufficiently full, it will then head off. It will go off and and, and take these resources over to the um the core mining area where they can then be unloaded and and dealt with appropriately and then a second train will pull up to, to get the next load and so on and in theory these trains will be going round and round fast enough that we'll never get any sort of backup along these belts here and hopefully that will be the case because the each of these trains is bigger than one of the the one than one of the space trains for capacity so fingers crossed it'll work but we should wait to see I'm not sure why Tristan has built this like this with the two loops and then the third one coming out here rather than just one big loop coming round to about here and then splitting the rails off as it comes down across here. Now it might be that this one he couldn't get that into a into a comfortable loop here, which makes a certain amount of sense. But then I don't know I don't, I don't know what understand why this loop is here and why he's got this one taking this one feeding lines one and three, then this one feeding lines two and four, and then this bypass for five. It, it, it's a bit weird. I'm not quite. It might just be that this is how it sort of fell together. But I feel like the obvious thing to do would be to have this come across. Well. We'll put in um, a corner like that as sharply as we can, then a loop round there to, I suppose, to there, and then a bit across there like that, and then we can get rid of all this stuff in the middle. There might be a very good reason why he's not done this, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to sketch that out there. Talk, and we can we can talk about it and and, and see how things go. Uh, we would also need to then link this onto there and this onto there. And this onto there, and we might need to do something clever with signals. Now it could be that he's done this as a way of pri changing the priorities between the different. I I don't know. I don't I don't know why he's done it like the way he has rather rather than like this. But um, he might he might have a good reason for it. We shall wait and see. He could then also then put the uh, this chain signal down here, and then have another normal signal over here, which would mean there'd be room for another train to queue in here if that ever became necessary. Hopefully that will never become necessary. It never should. But you never know. So carrying on back up the chain, let's have a quick look up in in, uh, in Norbit. So the way this system works is we've got a supplier thing here where we have all of all of the um, the junk it gets fed into this into this warehouse, which is currently not well. Actually, that is more than a train's worth. Um, we then get, and then any train that's any train that's going down should, in theory, pull into this station here and be loaded. Up, sorry, this station here and be loaded up with miscellaneous junk out of this warehouse. And then once it's idle for more than a few seconds, oh here we go. Here's an example. So this train pulls in here. It'll stop in the station, load up with an assortment of junk, and this is all the junk that's coming out of the uh, the scrap recycling over here. So we have a steady stream of scrap coming in. We turn that into into useful ores, feed them over to here, and they can then be loaded up into these trains. You can see that's filling up quite quickly. There we go. That's basically full. Um, it's not quite full because some of these stacks, like there's only 30 in that one, 28 in that one, and so on. But that's just how how it rolls. But then when it's been idle for a few seconds, it can then go off to up the um, or down the space elevator. And then the, when the next train comes in, we can dump some more into that one. And the scrap recycling over here has also been expanded. We now have two ruck, two copies of this, two sets of rows, and that's because whenever uh, Mike starts doing a bit of production, whenever whenever we um, have a material science um, catalogs being made, we get an enormous flood of um, of scrap coming through, and it clogs up absolutely everything because Mike is building, making stuff incredibly quickly, and then all his machines are going to sleep. 
So when they're when when they're running, we get the uh, he, he'll refill his train in in a couple of minutes. But then, but we'll get an enormous flood of scrap coming down the system, which we then have to deal with down here. Um, and then once he's finished filling his train up, the whole thing will go to sleep for quite a long time afterwards, um, while we wait while we wait for the uh, all those catalogues to get used up by the science production. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit bursty. <laughs> The other thing that's happened down out here on Norvis is that Tristan has expanded the fluid passover systems. So previously, we've had this system. Uh, we had a system down down here somewhere where there was a train coming in that was dropping a, a, a ground train that was coming in and dropping off light oil, and a space train that was picking up the light oil and taking it away. As we discussed last week, we decided that was ugly and a bad way of doing things because it meant the uh, the ground rail was crossing over the space rail, and that looked weird and wrong, and just we didn't like that very much. So now we've got the system here where the two run along parallel to each other, and so we've got the um, the light oil train here that's, that's where that comes in, stops here, and then we'll unload when there's a, when there, when a space train turns up and needs some light oil. Once it's filled up that train, it'll clear off and can then come back with some more oil for the next one. And that has been expanded out, so we've now got heavy oil here. We've got water here as well, which doesn't seem to have a train for some reason. I wonder if there's okay, there isn't there isn't a train bringing water over here yet. Um, I guess that's fair enough because we don't need a great deal of water up in space, and what we do need, most of it is being supplied from ice. Um, although some some of that's being sent over by delivery cannons, so we should probably start supplying water to the recycling area at some point. Although that said, I've just noticed there is a pipe coming across here uh, from a, from a pump over here. So actually, I take it all back. This station is being filled up with this tank over here um, by that pump, so that we'll pump the water from there along these pipes and straight into the train that way. So okay, I take it all back. That would, there is there is a train that is um there probably is a train that's doing this. If not, the system is ready and working. But then we've got heavy oil, light oil, petroleum gas because those are all needed, and lube as well because that's needed. And over here, we're treating them, treating it sort of like a liquid because we get through so many red circuits up in Norbit. So again, Tristan decided that it would be a good idea to have a train dedicated to those, and so he's, he's set up like this so that the a tra a train will come in from the red circuit production area, and we could do with one at the moment actually. So presumably over here, yes, we have a train limit. Oh, no, we have a train limit of zero. That is not 160 stacks. So this number is clearly wrong. And here we have divided by 16,000. We're putting in a 30,000. One of these numbers is wrong. Let's 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 change numbers at random and, and just to, just to make the thing work, and then tell Tristan that it's broken in, in, in uh, after the next video. So there we go. Now there is a train coming out from the red circuit area. It will come over here. It will unload into these purple belts very very quickly because we've got eight purple unloaders lo uh, unloading here and dumping it all into here. The uh, the space trains don't fill up quite as quickly because there's only four pushing them back across here. But it'll fill the track. But, but then it will fill a space train up when it comes down here, and the space train can then skedaddle up the uh, up the elevator as we've seen a million times before. This particular one goes to down here, uh, where we where we're unloading into this into this warehouse. And as you can see, we've got another. Uh, once again, we've got this time we've got ten belts unload, uh, unloading, so we're unloading really, really quickly, or trying to. And um, that's all dumping into this this uh, warehouse here, and they're then passed up into the. And this is going into the um, the the memory card production facility because we have a severe problem with memory cards. And this happens because every time you set up a new type of science, you put an enormous load on the memory card uh, system. We've also got a bit of a shortage of the um, of the sub of the uh, substrates coming through from here as well. So I think a train has been in fairly yes the train must have come in relatively recently unloaded a load of substrates they've all been dumped down here and now we've run out of them again because you get through them so quickly but the idea of this is that these then get these then get polished and um, fed into these machines which will then churn out in theory a solid space belt of um, which is 45 per second yes 45 per second of these uh, which will then flow down here and go into the storage system so over here we now have well it's, it's not it's not a train's worth yet but it's, it's more than half so it's getting there um, and the trains keep coming out here grabbing them all and and then taking them away again, because the thing is that whenever you whenever you start doing a new type of a new type of science tech uh, science card, you'll have to then start making the the catalogs here. So each and each one of these catalogs takes in four memory cards at least. So it takes it takes four memory cards to make a catalog, and it takes at least one memory card to make each one of those catalogs. So for down here, for example, you can see that this one produce takes in a memory card, and then 85% of the chat time it will produce a, it will produce a, a one of the data cards that you need. Uh, other other recipes are similarly bad. Sometimes they junk them. Sometimes they sometimes they just disappear. In general, there is a conservation of memory cards. Most of the time, you will get them back as junk ones, which you can try and reformat, or you'll get them out as a memory card. But even in the best case situation, each one of these catalogues costs you four memory cards. And you then end up having to fill up a belt like this that goes all the way up to your station. 
that's quite so that's that, there's a lot in there I wouldn't like to say how many but there's quite a lot then we're putting in in um, how many how many is it into each of these we're putting in then in a thousand into each of these uh, warehouses here so that's another two thousand uh, catalog which means another eight thousand um, memory cards then we're trying to unload another another thousand another eight thousand up here so that's sixteen thousand already plus um, the ones that are on the belts here, plus the ones that are in the train, which is another 500 of each one. Um, so that means another 2,000. So what are we on now? That's about that's about 18,000 memory cards. Um, and then there's a load on the belts over here as well. And then some of them, some of them get, some of them get made into, um, into, into the insights, which where it takes, um, uh, to be fair, it takes a fraction of, a, of, a, of, a, of one of those to make an insight. Um, so that's not too bad. And then those get fed up into these machines, where I think each significant data is it counts as at least one data card. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of buffers to be filled up. So you're looking at probably put need, needing to pull in about twenty thousand memory cards each time you put, you produce a new tier of science pack. And so because we've got um, we're on tier three for most of them, and, and Mike has started expanding onto tier four. So I think between us um, we're on about 12, 12 different tiers of science. So that means we've taken, we've pulled in two hundred and forty thousand memory cards just into all of these buffers that are made up of, um, on, 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 in, in these warehouses. That's quite a lot. So you can see why we've been struggling to make enough of them. But the thing is, once you get your science up and running and get it get it flowing, once you're doing the science, you tend to get a, a decent number of memory cards flowing back along the. Um, along the bus along here, uh, like that for example, because there's a huge flood of, of, of data cards there. I'm not quite sure exactly what produced them. I would guess it was some significant data being generated, but I'm not sure. But you get, yeah, so you get these, these floods of memory cards, and then, so we're then pouring quite a lot of them. You can see a trickle of them down here. They all come down here and get fed back in and recycled, re looped around and recycled. So in theory, once you've got science, science packs up and running, yeah, you do still need to make some more memory cards, because some of them do get junked, but you shouldn't need to make anything like as many. You should get most of them back. It's just those steps where you're trying to fill up the buffers that's really, really hard. I mentioned the junk data cards. Those, of course, come back around here and are fed off down this way like this, where they go into these supercomputers, which will recycle them, and sometimes, sometimes into good memory cards, which we can use again, sometimes into broken memory cards, which we can't use again and just have to turn into scrap down here. So, yeah, it, we, we, we get through a lot of memory cards, is what I'm trying to say here. Continuing with the general theme of getting resources to, to where they need to be, I realised that I'd stopped supplying the, um, the space bus with uh, the various types of modules. And, those, and, and these modules are needed for, um, for making all the some of the different science packs. So I think maybe the productivity modules are required for production science, speed modules are required for, uh, or for utility science, or maybe efficiency ones are required for utility science, I'm not sure. And then one of them is needed for one of the enhancement science packs as well. So. These were previously, when we had the, the rocket and train system over here, they were being brought into these stations, this station here, and dropped off and chucked into the rocket that way. So we'd bring up an entire train load at a time, which was fine. It worked. So we had these trains up here that were, uh, that were ha that we had some trains that were stopping off up here, and we then we're bringing them down here and dropping off here. So once we removed the rocket, that of course stopped working. So we needed to then reprogram those trains to go somewhere else. First thought was, well, we'll just add them in up here, put in a few extra stations, add in the belts, and oh dear, it's all a bit full. I don't think we can do that. So I decided that good, a good thing to do would be to put the stations down here. So we've expanded a little bit further down. We've now got this new drop-off area where we've got, currently we're using three of the stations here for the three types of modules, boop, boop, boop. And then I put in a load more because why not, essentially. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of stone on this one. That must have been some stuff that was just left on the floor when the building was done, which is a bit unfortunate. I wish the game wouldn't do that. We'll have to clear, clear, clear that up at some point, but um, not right now. So now we have trains that will go off to uh, to the pickup area where, where all these modules are being made up in Module City. They'll bring the modules down, drop them off here, fill up these stations. These stations. Although I say fill up, they are uh, they're set to only only bring stuff over when um, when there is less than two thousand in the in the um, in the in the warehouse. And I reckon that's probably going to be enough. We don't need to have an entire train load in here because there's a fair amount of buffer on the on the belt running up here as well. So by the time we've pulled through whatever we need from there, another train will have arrived. It'll dump some more into the into the station and it can and it can pass out pass them out up this way. Uh, for other other resources we may do that slightly differently, but for these I think that's absolutely fine. So these belts then, as you'd expect, run up here, come in and join in with all the rest of the belts going on into the into the bus system over here. They get passed through the weird sortimatron system here, and then come up onto the onto the belts up here. So they're just now they are just being supplied like every other resource that gets sent up to sent up to uh, space on the on this system. 
At the moment, we seem to just have some low-density structures that are waiting to go up, which is fairly typical. We get through a lot of low-density structures up there. So that means they can be fed up in this in the train that was here and has just finished unloading. You can see all the stuff pouring out here, and then they'll rattle through the through the system as normal. And they can be there. Yeah, here we go. So we've got the, um, the the efficiency and the speed modules here, and the production productivity modules there, and they all get passed off down this way and turned into the into the various science packs down here, as I said. And these now actually seem to be yeah. These are now running fast enough. These are fully backed up after what I was saying last week. So very happy with how this has been going. This just seems this seems to be great now. We don't we no longer have any problems, and it's because most mostly because we've finally got all the resources being brought over here. So of course it's fine. We've actually got the resources we need to get this working. I did need to do a little bit of tweaking over in Module City, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it was that I did. I, I certainly redesigned this station to be the uh, single warehouse rather than the. Uh, quintuple warehouse design that we had before. Um, I think there was something about it just wasn't calling trains properly, but we hadn't noticed because we didn't need it very often. So it's now, but I'm now stuck. A I've now fixed it, and the train now, this train can now rattle between module one pickup and module one drop whenever there's somewhere that's requesting multiple ones. So that's quite nice. And one of the good things about making all of these extra modules to sort of fill up those buffers down there is that that meant we got through quite a lot of glass. Because as you'll remember from, uh, well, if we look particularly over here, where we turn enormous quantities of glass into the product productivity modules. We turn, we don't turn glass into speed modules, but we do turn uh, electronic components into them. And that's another thing that uses quite a lot of glass. So that was quite nice. And there's quite a lot of silicon in all this stuff as well. And so that has been getting through some of those stone backlogs that we had. And if we have a look down in this area again now, to put in, the, in the glass area, before we had something like three and a half warehouses worth of glass here. Now we've got that one. In, now we've got less than one. That's amazing. So we've got through. We've got through nearly all of the backlog of glass. The stone is starting to flow again over here. And as you saw, the stone in the um, in the resource sorting area is now generally quite happy we seem to have we seem to have got all the supply under all, all, all the, de the demand is now greater than the greater than the um, the supply of stuff we're trying to get rid of once again so that's a that's a big relief we are now able to actually deal with all of the resources we're trying to get rid of trying to deal with and even yeah even the rare metals are coming in and getting used up so that's really nice and it, it's the best position to be in if you've got too much resource in areas where it's being produced as a byproduct it can lead to some serious problems of everything backing up and causing you and causing massive issues all the way back up the chain to wherever all, to wherever very very distant resources are being generated however if you've got not quite enough from that you can either then go off and set up a mine and then go off and use the mines to keep it topped up which is acceptable we can we can do that or you can have things like I showed you earlier with the coal, where excess is used for a slightly different or less efficient recipe in order to, to dispose of some of that. Or, because this is space exploration, if we had a shortage of iron, for example, we could go off to the iron planet in the solar system, which is uh, Jonas, and start doing core mining there, but have the, have the whatever deliver stuff from there only ship it, ship it over when there is an actual genuine shortage on Norvis. So we could use, use that as the top up. So there are lots of ways around these sort of things, and I think that this is going to, this is potentially going to work quite well for us. Also on the uh, Norbit main bus, we, I discovered that this, for some reason, this delivery cannon warehouse had become disconnected from the uh, from the warehouse up here. Um, I don't think it was from when I was putting these these belts in. Uh, it is likely it was my fault, but uh, I don't think it was from because I'm usually the one who's messing around with the bus up here. But I don't know how long that's been broken for because we yeah we'd, we'd run out of because uh, these belts. I don't think I'd have broken it when I was doing these belts. It must have been even longer ago. I'm not sure. But if you want if you want to go back through the videos and let me know, that would be um, entertaining to find out. So I put in a belt to unload here, and now that means we once again have sufficient uh, vulcanite and cryonite and all the other things flowing down the belt here. And that was a real puzzler because I was looking over here and going, "Why don't we have any? Why don't we have the vulcanite we need for the production science?" Uh, I don't know. There's 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 plenty in the in the drop off warehouse. There's loads. Of, there's loads at the other end of the of the system. It's, the cannons are all turned on. It all should be working, but no, it was because this 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 wasn't connected up to the to the warehouses. Fortunately, it was still connected to the um, to the circuit network. Otherwise, we'd have had an awful lot of extra being dropped in and lots of explosions and things. Although I suppose that would have drawn my attention to the problem sooner. But still, I would I would rather not have fixed it that way. I've also added in a lube station up here. So, so Tristan's fluid swap, swap over area down on Norvis that you saw then brings the trains up to here, where they will now sit here uh, on the um, the fluid buffer. Right. Okay. This is not. This appears to not be finished because I assume what's meant to happen is that this is now meant to also have. Okay. There we go. Does this? This one is, is set up properly. So it goes. It goes to. Uh, it drops down to Norvis. It gets. The, it gets some lube. It comes back up again. It sits in fluid buffer until there is a lube drop station that needs it. And as you can see, there's a destination full coming off it at the moment. When this. 
when this station over here for the bus does need it because it has dropped below a thousand in the big tank up here we can send the train up here it'll unload it push push the lube down here and we've got a system here that's basically saying uh, don't don't overfill that tank down there they just keep it at, keep it at, um, at 20,000 anything more than that would be ridiculous and so we're down here yeah we're, we're doing that I, I feel that these tanks are probably superfluous we could we could just have instead we could just not have this tank and put all of the buffer into this one and then have it push down this pipe and into there, that there maybe I'll do that in the next episode I mean that'd be fairly easy to do we can just flip that round and flip that round and tell that to pump all the time um, and then we'll quickly empty this tank down here and we can then remove it and just have a pipe going straight down here. I think that's probably a good idea. I'll do that next time. But we had, we did already have a tank here that had loads and loads of lube in it from from, uh, from getting rid of the excess lube barrels from this this one here. So that's why yeah, that's why it was a little bit unbalanced like that. And I think finally for today, I uh, also I also ended up having to sort out the uh, the copper and the, uh, and the and the steel. So previously, the copper and steel ingots were being brought up by delivery cannon, I think. Um, because we didn't have them coming up by uh, in, in the rockets. Yes, because we didn't. Yes, we didn't have. Um, we. So previously, we didn't have copper or steel or even iron ingots coming up properly, but on the um, on, on the uh, on, on the rocket system, I don't think. So we ended up having them coming up. It was either to a second rocket landing pad, or more likely, it was, they were coming, or possibly they were coming up by delivery cannon. I don't remember. But either way, they were being fed into warehouses over here and then turned into the plates here. So when we switched over to using the train system that's bringing up everything, and that was then able to do all of the ingots, the ingots were dropping in here and didn't really know where to go. So they were just rattling all the way down into, into the into the systems at the bottom and not getting not getting chopped up and sorted out properly. So now we've we fixed that. There is now a an, an unloader here that is bringing out the, uh, the the copper and steel ingots and putting them into these into these two warehouses over here where they can then be dealt with as appropriate to keep everything over here up to the right supply. This area is, I have to admit, turning into a bit of a mess, but it's because quite a lot of sort of quite a lot of stuff has been implemented a bit late so it's been put it's been put in after after sort of after the fact so the original design was quite nice and clean and then we decided actually we want to do um, we want to we want to keep do something with the rocket parts that are coming up in the rocket as well and oh we want to do something with the ingots we've just started to send up and 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 actually, actually that's about all there is but it's all been it's, it's been cobbled onto the back of it a little bit now the rocket stuff can we can probably now get rid of there are a few rocket bits in here but i think there aren't going to be any more rockets doing coming coming rocket parts ending up in here so we could get rid of that one um this would be quite a good way of just getting rid of them. Then we could demolish all of the rocket part handling stuff around here, which would be quite nice. And um, so, yeah, that would free up a little bit of space. But in general, it's 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 not it's not too bad. We do have a few little ugly bits, like um, like these belts that go underneath these ones in order to go up to this train system over here. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know why this got designed like this. I can't remember. It was far too long ago. But it is a bit ugly. And then we've got a few other afterthoughts, like this uh, area where we're storing the um, the low density structures in a separate where in a separate storehouse because it filled this one filled up, kept filling up. And the same with the rocket fuel as well. Again, because we just had too much of it. Uh, then we're, for, for some reason, I'm putting the um, putting both the uraniums onto the same belt here. That's another slight weirdness. But you know, it all it all comes together and it all does basically work. So I'm not I'm not going to go in and fiddle with it too much. So, I think that's a good place to end the video. I will, be, of course, be back tomorrow when I shall talk about things other than just the sheer logistics and uh, uh, supply situation. Because this is all this has been a bit of a uh, a one a one note video, I think. All talking, yes, talking very much about just getting getting the logistics up and playing nicely. Tomorrow we've got some sort of miscellaneous plans, miscellaneous fixes, plans for the future, and what's been going on in the science areas as well. Uh, I will, so that'll be tomorrow. There will, of course, be a video, a stream on uh, Monday when we should be carrying on with our game here and and sorting out all the problems I talk about in these videos and you know trying to carry on a bit as well. Uh, I think supply issues are still a bit of a problem for us, but I think we've got the mundane supplies sorted out now, so we can now go off and start looking at other things. But I'll talk about that some more tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday will be the XCOM stream. We had a reasonably good stream last night, uh, last week, although one person did get killed, sadly. Um, uh, we're going to uh, hopefully will um, things will go a little bit better from now on. But there is still ch a chance to, to uh, send over your soldier design if you'd like to be included. So please do that. And Tuesday, Thursday ish, I'll try and get, I'll try and keep the videos coming out for, uh, for, uh, on other things as well. Although my current one has been a bit of a bigger project than, than other videos I've been doing um, because it's been uh, rather rather different from what I'm used to doing. Let's put it that way. So yes, there is lots going on on the channel as always. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.